A simple and effective way to paint a blue sky with believable clouds in watercolor. Whether you're just getting started with painting skies or you're looking to learn a simple technique to help you quickly add a sky into landscape paintings, this one is for you. Let's jump in. I only have one single paint color on hand. This is cobalt blue. We're gonna keep this nice and simple today. I also have a couple of these regular kitchen paper towels on hand, and I'm actually going to be crumpling them up right now so that I can have them by my side, nice and crumpled and ready to go for when I need to lift up those clouds. All right, I'm gonna set that there, crumple this one up as well and set it over there. I have my container with clean water by my side. I have my regular blue Scott absorbent towels, which is what I use to stay on top of water control throughout the painting process. And I have just two brushes on hand. This is a size six mop brush. It's nice and large and very absorbent, which is very helpful when we're painting larger areas. And this is a size 14 round brush, which I'm going to be using mostly for the second layer. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to use my size 14 round brush to create a nice large puddle of cobalt blue on my mixing palette. I want this puddle to be kind of a coffee consistency, so I would say around 50% paint, 50% water. Because we're gonna be pre-wetting our paper, we do want a good amount of color in that mixture because the water in that mixture is gonna get added to the water that is already on our paper paper from having done that pre-wetting process. And if your color is already way too pale because there's too much water in that puddle on your palette, your color is gonna end up looking even paler because it's gonna get more water added into it. So set yourself up for success with a good amount, of this cobalt blue or whatever blue it is that you're using for your sky. I do like cobalt blue for a regular sky. I find that cobalt blue is closest to the the blue that I would see in a regular day, <laughs> not a cloudy day or a rainy day or um, anything too dramatic going on with the sunset and different colors or anything like that. Just a regular sunny day color. Later on, I will be sharing more painting tutorials where I can share how to mix colors in your sky and make your skies more dramatic, more colorful, etc. So stay tuned for those. But for now, I just want you to practice with one single color and really hone those essential techniques, that water control, and all of those things that are important that you practice before moving on to any anything more complex. So as you can see, my water is very blue. I wanna make sure that I have clean water for my pre-wetting process. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this and we'll get started right away. So I'm gonna switch on over to my size six mop brush and I have my container with clean water with me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of water at a time from my container and just smooth it on my paper and just smooth it on using soft, lateral horizontal motions here. And I make sure to go back to where I started, re-wet that area and make my way down a little bit more. Continue coming back to that spot where you started to re-wet that. Because if you just make your way across once or down once or in whatever direction it is that you're working toward, just once, it's very likely that by the time you reach the opposite edge, that spot where you started is already going to be partially dry or completely dry. And we don't want that. We're looking for a nice even sheen all throughout our watercolor sheet. You wanna continue re-wetting until you see that nice even sheen. Remember that dry paper is thirsty paper, which means that if you just place water or paint on that dry paper, it's gonna get absorbed immediately. And this is why we are left with sharp defined edges around shapes and lines that we paint in when we're working on dry paper. Whereas when we paint on wet paper, we get soft effects because watercolor always expands and diffuses out when placed on wet paper and we're looking for soft effects right now going up and down now vertical motions everything is wet and I have arrived at that nice even sheen all throughout which means that I can go ahead and get started with 
the painting process. Continuing to use my mop brush here, what usually happens in skies is that the color is more intense or darker in the top and it gets lighter and lighter or paler and paler as you get closer to the horizon line, as you're making your way down. Because of this, I'm gonna go ahead and start placing my paint at the top. If I start at the top, when those paintbrush bristles are nice and loaded with that color, that color at the top is going to be darker and then as I make my way down and as that paint is running out from my paintbrush bristles, the color is going to naturally appear paler and paler. Of course, you could reload along the way and darken some areas if you'd like, but I would not recommend placing any more color, especially in the lower third, because you might end up making that too dark. And we're looking for a bit of a gradient, a bit of a softer, paler color at the bottom. And do remember that watercolor dries lighter than how it looks when it's wet, so don't be afraid to go in with a good amount of color, especially in the top half. All right, cool, so that's enough blue. I rinsed out my paintbrush and I'm gonna quickly remove this excess water beadage <laughs> that it has collected right here along the edges of my masking tape before I do my lifting with my paper towels. You could decide to shift your board to one side or another side or up and down if you want to. It's one of the great things about working with a board. You can use it to your advantage, especially when working on those larger washes, and it can help create softer gradients and effects, as long as your paper is still wet enough, of course. So this is the point where I'm gonna bring out those kitchen paper towels. Make sure they are nice and crumpled because that will help you create that cloud texture. And everything is still wet and workable because I took my time with that pre-wetting process. I'm just gonna start lifting up some clouds. A couple of things that are important as you're lifting up these clouds. Number one, you wanna make sure to shift or change to a clean, dry section of your paper towel as you're lifting your clouds um, as you go because as you continue lifting and absorbing, you're gonna start collecting more and more paint in your paper towel. And if you continue lifting with that section of your paper towel, then all you're going to be doing is stamping on fresh paint on the section where you're actually intending to lift up some paint. Continue shifting that spot and using a clean section of your paper towel as you go. And another thing that I want to make sure that you know if you're looking for realistic results is that these clouds at the top should be larger or taller and your clouds should be getting thinner or more, more narrow, less tall, I should say, as you make your way down. And this is due to perspective change. Essentially, clouds right here along the top edge of your painting are closer to us as the viewer of the scene than clouds that are closer to the horizon line. And so as you're making your way down, absorbing these little clouds with your paper towel, make sure that you're using a smaller or more narrow section of your paper towel. Make them smaller and smaller if possible as you make your way down. Now, if your paper is still super wet, you might find that Initially, you can see the shape of the cloud that you lifted up and then it kind of dissolves or disappears because the paint is still too wet and it's still moving around a lot. I'm gonna switch to a new paper towel. But anyway, what I was saying is that if your paint is still super wet, when you do your lifting, you might see your cloud and then as that paint continues moving around, it kind of disappears. So if that's happening to you, just allow that paint to settle on your paper a tiny bit longer. Um, don't allow it to completely dry because if you do, you're not gonna be able to lift up anything because that paint is already going to be dry. See how I'm kind of doing streaking motions now, just using a little section of my paper towel, especially down here. Streaking motions. So you wanna make sure that you're lifting up your clouds while your paper is still wet, 
but if your paper is too wet, then it's just going to take allowing your paint to settle on your paper a tiny bit longer and then just doing your lifting again. And your clouds are probably going to stay. Okay, a little bit more streaking motion down here. Smaller and smaller clouds as I make my way toward the bottom. Larger clouds over here at the top. You don't want to lift all of your cobalt blue up. Make sure that there is a lot of irregularity all throughout your sky. You don't want to create any patterns or organized looking shapes or lines or anything like that. Keep everything very irregular. I think that's enough. If I continue pulling up more color, I'm going to get rid of the intense blue that I want over here. And I know that my watercolor is going to dry lighter than how it looks when it's wet. And I do want to make sure that I have enough blue in my sky. This is the point where I'm going to allow everything to dry completely. And then we're going to go in with a bit more cobalt blue to define some edges and make some sections of my sky even darker. And that's going to help increase the contrast and really make those clouds pop. All right, everything is pretty much dry at this point and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to once again use my size 14 round brush to create a nice puddle of cobalt blue over here on my mixing palette. This is enough to get me started here and take a little bit more water with my size 14 round brush. But with your lifting that you did with your paper towels, you should already have some beautiful cloud shapes in your sky. All you're gonna be doing with the second layer is visualizing that shape a little bit more and painting around it, intensifying the blue behind the cloud and kind of defining that shape that you've already created a little bit more. I'm just gonna drag this color on over to the right. And I'm just going to layer on a little bit of this blue, darkening certain sections of my sky, making sure that the edges of my clouds are very irregular, so I'm pushing my paintbrush up and down and kind of wiggling it as I am painting around my clouds. If I want to lose this edge, I just go in with a clean, slightly damp brush, run my paintbrush bristles along the edges that I'm looking to soften. Because we are painting on dry paper, so we are being left with sharp, defined edges. But any edges that you want to soften, you can always just go in with a clean and slightly damp brush run those clean bristles over that shape and soften it. Notice how the edges of my clouds are very irregular. I don't want any smooth edges along any of my clouds because that's not going to look very natural or realistic and continue using the shapes that you've already created with that first layer to help guide you as you continue sculpting these clouds. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more blue here. It's totally up to you to decide where you wanna layer on it's totally up to you to decide where you want to layer on your blue and what shape you want to ultimately give your cloud. But continue guiding yourself with those shapes that you already created in that first layer. And as I make my way down, I am watering my, my blue down more and more in my palette because I want my blue to be less intense. Uh, closer to the horizon line, right? I like it when some of the edges of my clouds are lost and other edges are a little bit more defined. So I'm not trying to really go all around my clouds super perfectly. Very watered down blue at this point.
And you can even create the illusion of very, very faint, pale, transparent clouds, essentially by painting around an area and just leaving that previous layer shining through. This shape is a little bit too smooth. I'm gonna add more regularity to it by just going in with the tip of my brush and kind of pushing it up and down. There it is, I like that shape a little bit more. All right, just a few more bits and pieces here with very watered down blue. This exercise, I feel, is very important for anyone who is starting with skies and cloudscapes with watercolor because it helps you develop your water control in a less overwhelming way because we're just using one single color. And it also helps you practice visualizing cloud shapes which is often hard to do when you're just getting started with something like this. Painting water and clouds and pretty much anything organic and natural is in part strategizing and planning and visualizing and also in part working with the shapes that are happening as you are laying down your color. So it's part planning, part embracing what is going on and kind of sculpting around it, if that makes sense. Finding shapes and what you've created organically. I don't wanna to do too much and start overworking my paper. I do wanna make sure that if I add any extra layering here at the bottom that my that my paint is very watered down on my palette. This just looks a little bit strange to me. This high level of contrast is creating a shape that is pulling too much of my attention this way. I'm just gonna soften this. All right, great. Just gonna do some final layering with T consistency cobalt blue down here. Gonna add a little bit more of a shape to this cloud right here. Gonna sculpt this cloud just a little bit more. Looks a little bit flat to me. And that is about it. That's all I'm gonna do. I don't want to start overworking things. It's very important to practice staying loose and not going in to get rid of textures or little things going on unnecessarily because that can definitely end up leading to overworked results. And with that, I'm all done with this cloud study. If you'd like to check out more of my beginner-friendly watercolor landscape tutorials, I'll make sure to link to one of my full beginner-friendly landscape tutorials right here. And there's a lot more over on my channel. Hope to see you there.